Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I am now going to answer question number seven from the January 2020 Pure Mathematics P2 International A-Level Edexcel paper. And this is a question about trigonometry. Um, here we are given an equation, eight tan theta equals three cosine theta. And we are told that this may be rewritten in the form three sine squared theta plus eight sine theta minus 3 equals 0 and we have to show how that takes place so when you're asked to show something and they give you exactly what it's supposed to become you have to be very careful to show your steps properly um, you can lose a lot of marks if you don't do that okay so um, when we want to deal with um, tree identities now a lot of students they get a bit confused about how to deal with them and they think that they will be able to see the whole picture from the beginning to the end. And if they can't see that whole picture, uh, they just give up. So I don't know how to do it. I don't know how am I going to get that. I don't know. There was a square there. Where does that come from? I give up. And that's not how you're supposed to um, think in these type of questions. Now, what you're supposed to do is just go by what you know and just do whatever you can do. And, you know, have a bit of logic in your in your head with it at the same time but don't expect to see the whole picture from the first step to the last step from the time that you start okay so just just do what you have to do now first of all there are two main identities which you should know um, for trigonometry and one of them is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one and the other one for um, you know, the trigonometry in p2 would be tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Now these two identities, you're going to be using them again and again, all right, not only in P2, also in P3 and P4, you, you'll need these identities again and again, okay, even in sometimes the M1 you might need some of them. All right, so it's, it's very important that you know these two. These two, you have to know them. Okay? You have to know these identities, okay, you know, inside out to understand how to apply them and where they can be used. Now, in this question, if you look at what we're starting with, the only thing that we can do first really is, you know, just change the tan theta into sine theta over cosine theta. So we can say, all right, that's eight times sine theta divided by cosine theta. And that's equal to three cosine theta. Okay, that's the first step change the tan theta for sine theta over cosine theta now we can see that all right we've got this fraction there's no fraction here let's get rid of the fraction let's multiply both sides of the equation by cosine theta so if we do that we have eight sine theta equals three cosine theta times cosine theta which is written as cosine squared theta we don't write it as cosine theta squared we write it as cosine squared theta it's a cosine it's the whole thing that's squared not just the angle Right, so this is the cosine of the angle, the whole thing, the cosine of theta, the whole thing is squared. That's written as, the way you write that is cosine squared theta. You don't write it as cosine theta squared. Okay, now, how are we going to now make this look like that? So this is where you, start, you step back and you think, okay. Now, I also know this other identity where, as I said, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Now using this identity, if I see that in what we have to show, there is there are no sine angles, or sine squared theta, sine theta, there's no cosine squared theta, there's no cosine theta. So if we replace, if we use this identity and make cosine squared theta the subject, you get cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta, and if we replace the cosine squared theta with 1 minus sine squared theta, we'll have an equation with just sine thetas and sine squared thetas in it, as is required. So, so, okay, let's do that and see what happens. Hopefully that will work out then. So you have 3 times, instead of cosine squared theta, I'll write 1 minus sine squared theta. I'm going to expand the bracket, so 8 sine theta is equal to 3 minus 3 sine squared theta. And now you notice that the very next line will be what we want because we want to bring everything onto one side uh, bring it to the side where the sine squared theta is going to be positive so I'm going to add three sine squared theta to both sides so I have three sine squared theta and plus eight sine theta 
minus 3 equals 0. So we have there for finished part A, we have shown clearly how 8 tan theta equals 3 cosine theta becomes 3 sine squared theta plus 8 th sine theta minus 3 equals 0. Okay, now for part B, it says hence. Now hence, solve for, the x, between, for x between 0 and 90 degrees, 8 tan 2x equals 3 cosine 2x. Now comparing this to what we have up there, okay, comparing this to what we have up there, you can see why they have the word hence. The word hence means using what you have just done. Okay, so basically what we can see from this, let me just bring this down here so we can have, see it more clearly. Okay, what we have in the first part of the question is that, and we show how it became, how this became, can be rewritten as 3 sine squared theta plus 8 sine theta minus 3 equals 0. So we've shown how that becomes that. So this is of the same type exactly. This is 8 times the tan of an angle equals 3 times the cosine of an, the same angle giving answers to two decimal places in degrees. So basically here now, what we can do is, um, we can say in, in this part of the question, it's like the theta is the 2x. Okay, so therefore we can say that um, 8 tan of 2x equals 3 cosine of 2x can be rewritten as 3 sine squared 2x plus 8 sine of 2x uh, minus 3 equals 0. So just it's the same thing exactly except except theta we have 2x. Okay so we have to solve this equation. Now this looks like a quadratic equation and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let um, sine of 2x be a particular letter. I can call it anything I want. I can call it y. I can call it let's say let's say let's let's call it y. So we're going to have 3 this is this is like y squared 3y squared plus 8y minus 3 equals 0. Now, a lot of people don't like to do this. Some people like to do this. I mean, either way, you can just factorize it straight away using keeping a sine sine and 2x. Um, some people like to make it like this so it's more familiar to them uh, when we're dealing with factorizing. So, you know, you write it as y first, and then you say, okay, when you find y, that is sine 2x, and you continue. Um, I'm going to factorize this using my grid method, which I like to use. Um, let's see, does it factorize first? I think it does. The product is minus 9 and the sum is 8. It should be factorized. Let's see. So we're going to write 3y squared in this box and minus 3 in this box. Two numbers multiplied to give you negative 9y squared and add to give you plus 8y. It must be minus, must be 9 and minus 1. 9y and minus 1y. They give you minus 9y squared and they add to give you plus 8y. That looks that's correct. So the common factor from this column is 3y. And here it's y. So that gives you 3y squared minus 1. And 3y times plus 3 gives you 9y. So we've got our uh, solution or our factors. 3y minus 1 and y plus 3 equals 0. So we can say y is equal to 1 third and y equals negative 3. So now we, we've said let y equals sine 2x. So we can say, therefore, sine 2x is equal to 1 third, and the sine of 2x equals negative 3. Now, this has no solution, because the sine of an angle can never reach negative 3. If you put inverse sine of negative 3 in your calculator, it will give you a math error, as you'll see. I mean, you don't have to do this. You should know any time the sine of any angle gives you a ratio which is above 1 or below minus 1, it will not give you any solution, and I'll just... To prove it to you, I'll show you shift sine of negative 3 will give you math error. Okay, so that's sure. Now sine 2x equals a third. Now we are in degree mode. The question did say write it in degrees to two decimal places. Yes. So let's um, put this in our calculator. Inverse sine of one third. So we've put inverse sine of 1 over 3. And that will give us one of the angles. So we have 2x equals equals 19.47 what was it? 4712 4712 
Okay, that's one angle. Now, the other thing we should have done before I actually started this was check the limits. The limits are between 0 and 90. Okay, um, so the limits are for x are between 0 and 90. Now, what we have here is 2x. Now, if we just leave our limits between 0 and 90 and we stop there, we're going to lose some solutions. So what we have to do is we have to modify the limit to make it say the same thing as what the angle is. So it says sine 2x, you know, there's the 2x there. This is going to also say 2x here. Okay, so that's, you multiply then everything by 2 in the limit. So this is going to be 0 to 180. So we have to go all the way to 180 and find the solutions until 180 degrees, not until only 90. So the other solution for sine, when you have one of the angles, the other angle will always be 180 minus the angle. 180 minus the angle the calculator gives you. So the sine curve, it gives you an angle. Okay, between 0 and 180, it gives you one angle, which is over here. Okay, that's a 19.47. That's what the calculator gave us. The other angle is that shares the same sine ratio is over here. So it's this is if this is 19.7, that is 180 minus 19.47. Sorry. So we're going to subtract this from 180. So I have 180 minus the answer, which gives me 160.528. 160. 160.528. Whoops. 528 dot 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 it continues on okay so i've just written it to a few more decimal places than i need okay so there's the answer for 2x but we've got to find the value of x and x is going to be a half of these angles because this is 2x so we've got to take these angles and divide them by two so i'll divide this by two and that gives me 80.26 to two decimal places that's 80.26 I'll write it, yeah, 80.26. That's and this angle, which was 19.747, 19.4712 divided by 2, which gives me 9.74. 9.74 to two decimal places. And there we have the two angles, which um, are the solutions to this equation. Okay, um, give you answers to two decimal places. Yeah, that's it. So there we have it, the answer to question number seven. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, if you would like to have uh, or to watch other questions from this particular paper, you can click on the playlist that's going to appear in this area somewhere at the end of the video. And if you want to watch other questions to do with P2 trigonometry, click on this icon here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, click on the subscribe button here. And if you'd like to um be linked to other p2 material there's a card at the top that will take you some other place to do with p2 thank you for watching and i hope you understood and i hope that um we'll see you again